destroy you! Oh, yeah! Hello, all. Uh, Thomas here, and we have finished our journey of rewatching season six, and. Yeah, now we're jumping into season five because I hate myself. Well, that's not true. Y'all voted for season five. Y'all like to see me suffer, apparently. I understand it, but I will get my revenge on you one day. And you'll never know when it's coming or what it will look like. I dress for revenge and sleep. Lately, I've been dressing for revenge. Anyhow, I am still at work on the season six rewrite. And I am also currently working on other things, possibly to do with um, fairy tale, maybe some Taylor Swift things, you know. But Winx is what pays my bills, and also it is genuinely fun. So, because I love myself, we're doing this, which feels weird to say, because I talk about how much I suffer doing this. What is reality anymore? It is a series of contradictions. Oh God, do I have the curse of contradictions? Am I Zareth? Am I the cute sad boy. I don't know what's happening anymore, if you couldn't tell. Anyway, we are beginning the last decent season of Winx Club today, season five. And I think what will make this really a lot more interesting is because not only is this the first season to be co-produced with Nickelodeon, but also because I've rewritten this season already, I feel like I can provide insight onto like a lot of the changes and alterations I made. Because I do feel like that this season, unlike season six, had a really strong structure. It was easy to build off of. It's just some of the dialogue and story uh, decisions were, um, interessante. Anyway, let us begin our journey of pain and crying and stupid mermen who love garbage like me. <laughs> the spill. I will say it's nice to have title cards that don't have that annoying fucking music to them. Behold, CGI Gardenia. They really used a lot of CGI for the backgrounds. They've always done that, but I feel like the newer seasons really uh, took it to an egregious level. Cause like, if you look at Gardenia in the first three seasons, it's so cute. It's very limited in color palette, it's simple, abstract. And then from season four onward, Gardenia is, mm. And we're starting with nonsense, which I guess fits with all the fruity music bar filler from season four. You'll also notice that the animation is a little bit different. Season five marked the start of puppet animation, which is where you make a 2D puppet similar to a 3D model, and then you rig it to be animated so you don't have to draw it over and over and over again. Some season four episodes had the style of animation where they were testing it out. We take you to your room. Don't worry, we know the way. No! <laughs> And you'll notice it looks, um, not great. What the fuck? Is that a fucking cat? Hey, don't fucking look at me like that. That's a weird looking fucking cat. Puppet animation has its perks. A really great example of good puppet animation will be Tangled the series. Love that fucking show. There's nothing I couldn't do, not with you by my side. Season five is also interesting because it really changed the status quo of the show. The Winx had graduated from Alfia. They weren't students anymore and they were like living on earth full time. We've got a lot of things going on in Gardenia. Our love and pet shop for one. And there's our music group. So now you don't know if you're going back to magics? Is and they had decided that they were gonna continue to follow their own dreams while also being guardian fairies. And we've decided that we'll continue to be fairies of the magic universe, but we'll never give up on our dreams. And that was gonna be a really interesting angle for them that Rainbow quickly abandoned. And it's weird because season five seems to pretend it's gonna follow through on that at first until uh, return to Elfia. This area is for students. Your rooms are situated in the teacher's wing. I thought you knew. Hmm. You're no longer students, girls. You better get used to the idea. Two hours later. I'm running a search of all known magic databases for Cyrenics. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Like I remember when this came out originally, I was so fascinated with how they were gonna like follow through from season four and how the series was gonna continue to change. And then it went right back to the usual shit, but worse. <laughs> oh Lord. Again, a fucking game. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Same old fucking shit. You've come a long way, Blue. I couldn't have done it without you, Daphne. 
When was this conversation supposed to happen? Why is Bloom in her season four outfit? See, I actually like the idea of like revisiting Bloom and Daphne's relationship from a more mature angle, especially given the fact that Bloom, you know, her sister is dead. And I feel like Bloom never really got the chance to process and work through that stuff. And I think reflecting on it as an adult now, she'd go, wait, I'm around Daphne's age, you know, when she died. I wonder what her life would look like now. And I also really like the, the parallel to Roxy in that because Bloom kind of is Roxy's older sister in a way. You were there for me, just like a big sister. It's just frustrating because Roxy gets used as a proxy and then forgotten. Roxy the proxy. <laughs> Kill me. Shut up. <laughs> Look. Oh no, an oil rig. You know, not gonna lie, I remember when we all made fun of these like heavy ham-fisted environmentalist themes in media um, and then climate change came along and ruined everything. And it's like, oh, maybe we do need this. Maybe it is that bad because it is. I just, ooh, mm-mm. Uh, st I'm remembering like stories of oil rig disasters, like polluting the ocean, like literal fire on the ocean and big companies just getting to get away with that shit. It's, mm. Oh my god, this fucking pen didn't kill me. Fun fact, uh, when I was rewriting the season and I had that pendant, I forgot about it, which is why it was never found again. But we'll say it was symbolism. <laughs> we'll say it was symbolism. Okay, there were a lot of things and that pendant was pointless. If I was gonna forget one thing, it was gonna be that. And Roy. Why is Tekna in her old hairstyle? <laughs> Hats are in this year. <laughs> you guys, they're teasing. I think it looks great. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Sky's hair does not look great. It looks like trash. It looks like Brandon's hair, but worse. Ew! Snarky Musa is back though. I missed her. I missed her so much. I'm just gonna appreciate that this is like one of the few seasons where Musa and Riven don't... Actually, no, they do have pointless drama. Why the fuck you lying? But it's on Musa's side. Riven himself actually is pretty decent this season. I'm just gonna enjoy it. And also, like, this was the first season in, like, I think three years at that point. So all, like, this stuff with the characters just hanging out at the bar, honestly, it felt like a welcome home to, like, the show after so long. But looking back, I'm like, they're really not setting up much for these characters um, and what they're going to be dealing with for the season. Like, the only thing that's getting set up is Bloom and Sky's pointless drama that no one likes. No more crown princing for me this year. A fucking course. I just, I, Sky was king and then he was crown prince and now it's like nothing. What, what are titles? What is anything? I mean, generally speaking, princes don't become kings until like their dads die. You don't become the monarch until the current monarch dies. So fair, but still. I wanted to- Hey Bloom, what do you think of this? Can we talk about the fact Bloom was so disinterested in her boyfriend that she just wandered over to like talk to her bestie Misa? I love it. I do love Flora giving Sky advice though. That's very Flora. It's very um nurturing and maternal and wise of her. Where's Aisha? Oh my God, they remembered that Aisha exists. Aisha, you okay? Fabulous. Hey, how you doing? Well, I'm doing just fine. I lied, I'm dying inside. Oh, Aisha, you don't gotta hide your sadness. It's okay to still hurt. Poor Aisha, she's been through the ringer. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. It's so weird though, because like they pretend that they're gonna do stuff with her like grieving Naboo and moving on, but like it's never really addressed again. Like there's one instance where Naboo's ghost is like, you let me die, but it feels so out of place in this juvenile season. You, well, at least that one. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Tritanus? Well, he's kind of a psycho. Um, do we want to unpack that the evil member of the family is also, um, the darkest in skin tone? Like, he's light-skinned, but, like, um, not a good look. Uh, well, 
Unpack it in the comments. I do love that Tressa's back, though. I love Tressa. And we get to see Andros in all its glory when it's not being ruined by Valtor. I actually really love that the ocean is purple. It feels so magical and also the visually distinct from Earth's oceans. That was one thing about um, moving on to this animation and being in true HD for the first time. These environments are gorgeous. See, season five isn't making me want to die like season six. I feel like this is going to be so fascinating for you guys to watch. I hope it is. And we're also confirming we are in the current era because everyone has phones and everyone is live streaming. Oh, it's a clamshell. I never noticed that before. That's so cute. He's so great. And Tritanus is so not. Ooh. Look at this photograph. They're the same picture. I don't mind them expanding um, the family and having like male mermaids or tritons or whatever what you want to call them. My issue is Tressa was crown princess and Ligeia was queen. Why did the matriarchy become a patriarchy? Like, I think it would have been more interesting if this was a kingdom or rather a queendom that was led by a queen a female monarch. That's also why I made that choice in the rewrite. I also thought it made Tritanus' motivation a lot more interesting because then he has this very misogynistic angle to his desire to be on the throne. He's like a powerful woman. Nay, nay. <laughs> nay, nay, I'm threatened. <laughs> nay, nay. It does feel weird though that the Winks aren't here for this. Like, yeah, they're seeing it streamed, but like they're not really involved in what's going on. They feel very disconnected from Tritanus as a villain. He feels very shoehorned into their story. Like the only person in the group that Tritanus would have like an actual connection to is Aisha, but they don't really do much with it aside from like cousin Aisha. And Aisha's like, you monster. I was just about to launch an idea where Tahani was gonna give herself an asymmetrical haircut. You monster. Thank you. <laughs> Tressa, whoa, hey, what happened? Hey. You know, if the Winks were actually like ready to save the day, they would use their Zoomix wings and teleport over there and kick ass. And none of this, oh no, they can't do that underwater. Um, their magic Winks was sufficient underwater. And honestly, we'll get to this when we get to the transformations this season, but like they had a whole comic mermaid form to work with. That shit was beautiful. Cyrenix could never. And honestly, I love you, Harmonix, but you also were not, um, I think Aquatics is the name. Basic name, but it's gorgeous. You know, I'm remembering when this came out, it was coming out around the same time as Legend of Korra, which for Tiny Me was everything. Those shows together on the same channel, give me life. And now I'm remembering all the <laughs> comparisons between Assassin Tritanus and Damon. The era of bending is over. <laughs> it's funny. Now I'm imagining Tritanus with Amon's voice. <laughs> Instead of the whiny little brat, Adam Wiley. I love Adam Wiley, but this was not the correct choice. Tritanus is so not, they'll be sorry. We are Nerissa's knights of destruction. Your destruction. I don't know why, but I always imagine Dante Bosco as Tritanus. I've spent years preparing for this encounter. Training, meditating. You're just a child. Just me. I really wish Tressa got to wipe the floor with him though. Traitor! Tressa, no, guard your brother. Tressa is a badass bitch and we love her. Side note, um, I love the designs of all like the mer people. Like, and I also like the little gender difference of like the men have like those fins on their arms and backs, whereas the women have wings kind of like they're fairies. I love it and it makes them it makes the mermaids of the Winx Club franchise very unique compared to other mermaids and they fit in with their universe and I love it. And it also makes sense since like on this planet mermaids are like always flying out of the sea as well. Whatever is going on there, I'm sure King Neptune can handle it. Wow, the Winx actually seem like engaged in what happened and mature about it. Oh, season five. You are not as bad as I usually think you are. Hey, Bloom. Whoa. Well, Sky doesn't take anything seriously because he's trash, but do we expect anything different from him? Oh no. Actually, yeah, working on an oil rig is one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet. This is actually a lot more common than you would think. And it's also terrible because like, if this goes down, you're in the middle of the sea, elevated way high up. There are dangerous winds going on because of how high up, like above the sea you are. It is 
fucking horrific. And also, it's very easy to slip off of these platforms. The Winks are like, okay, the authorities are not going to do jack shit about this. We got to save the day. Who needs cops when you have the Winks? <laughs> Literally, though. Bloom, I want to go too. Sorry, Roxy. I want you to stay here. I need you to look after the people on the beach. I hate this. Bloom, I want to go too. Fuck you! This is the beginning of Roxy being excluded. Even in situations where it would make sense for her to transform and help, she's excluded. And I can't help but f feel that this was a way for the writers to suddenly go, don't expect Roxy to be relevant this season. And I hate it. Like, can't she at least help out a little bit on the side? If she's not going to be a Winx, just let her help from time to time. At least let her transform. Magic Winx! Believe it! Hmm. And this is also reminding me, uh, if you haven't seen it already, go check out Lisa Fevrol's video on season five, like, breakdown. It's, it's fantastic. She mentions that, like, there's the issue of why are they using Believix currently. And I think this season really, it could have been the chance to establish rotating transformations. Like, they Winks use different forms depending on the situation. So, like, because Believix is their most recent form, the writers just go, oh, they'll just use Believix all the time. It makes sense they're using Believix right now because they're still on Earth. They're still off the heels of their latest adventure. But I think what would have been great is if they went back to Enchantix, like, you know, I do in the rewrite, a shameless plug, and they rotate between the forms. So, like, whenever there's a mission on Earth that involves the belief of the people, they start using Believix, but their default is Enchantix. Plus, um, you know, what a way to bait old fans. Firecatcher! <laughs> this sequence is actually really interesting because it's not a fight. The Winks are just using their powers to like competently save the workers and like do their best to put out the fire. And I really like that, like Bloom dispersing the flames, her absorbing the fire, them trying to like get rid of all the debris that's falling. I think like these are very interesting uses of their powers. I don't know, I really enjoy the sequence, like unironically. And the specialists are helping too, like they're evacuating workers to like make things easier for the Winx. I feel they're really using the characters in smart ways in this sequence. Granted, Roxy should be here, but you know. Or at the very least, Roxy could use her powers to like either navigate animals in the sea away from the rig or maybe get them to, you know, help in small ways. I don't know, let her Aquaman it. <laughs> let her be Aquaman or Aqua Roxy. Oil delete. Oh God, oil delete. Okay, this begs the question, can Tecna just delete things from existence, like entirely? Like, is she able to just break the rule of energy and matter cannot be created or destroyed? Like, can she just break that rule? Because if so, holy shit. Constricting fun! Oh no! Flora's like, my vines will be useful, damn you. Although I'm like, girl, that's, um... That's gonna cause a lot of problems. Like, I, it would be better to redirect the oil somewhere, like have Tecna contain the oil in one of her spheres. Oh, Show off. Aw, that, that was really cute though. See, Musa and Riven have their moments when they're not being terrible. Did I stop it? No, baby, no you didn't. <laughs> But you tried though. Like everyone is getting to be useful in their own unique ways, and I really appreciate that. Uh, my wings. Ugh. And as many problems as I have with like the underwater magic with Believix, I will admit this is pretty good uh, establishment of like Believix is not going to be very useful underwater. I do, I do like that because they're signaling there's an issue. Her wings, they're not. It really, uh, aerodynamic is like the word for like in the sky, obviously, but, um, I don't, I don't know what the equivalent of underwater would be. Aquadynamic? Hydrodynamic? Easy there. Oh, no! Sky, why did you even bring the pendant here? Jesus Christ. Love Bloom saving her boyfriend, but not the innocent man. I mean, I get it, but this, at the same time, knowing what she is now, I just find that very funny. But how do we get to that guy? It's all up to Aisha now. Wow, they don't even try. Aisha doesn't even know that a man has fallen. Morphix coming in clutch. Aisha proving once again 
that she is the most capable member of the Winx. Like, look at her lifting this man out of the depths, like the, the fucking queen she is. Even when her wings are weighing her down, along with all the oil. And it's all green technology! And natural water filter, powered by solar and wind energy! See, like, as engaging as this, um whole sequence is, it feels very disconnected from the Tritanus plot. Like, it's only an excuse to, like, have him mutate and also have your environmental message, but it's not really relevant to the plot in any other way, which is why I had this be something that Tritanus set up to distract the Winx while he carried out his assassination attempt. Like, he took advantage of Earth's disregard for the environment with their oil rigs and used that to create the crisis, which ties this into the plot more. Oh, Mike and Vanessa being supportive parents. We love to see it. I lost it. Thank you for making that announcement that no one cared about. The pendant is like the thing I care about the least right now. The oil from this spill could pollute thousands of miles of ocean. But now magic is back on Earth and in its oceans. So pollution and magic could mix. See, I find that really interesting because this season with magic returning to Earth opens up so many possibilities of what that could mean. Like what could happen to the earth and all of its systems with magic being introduced and the chaos that would follow. I think that's really interesting and they do nothing with it, which is gonna be a running theme. We are the tricks. <laughs> I'm still not over how convenient the tricks are in this prison. Why were they sent here? See, I at least tried to like have a reason for them to be here and it was like part of their long-term plan. But here it's like, it's so convenient that he winds up right next to these three. Though I will admit, it was iconic to see the tricks again after like so long, especially with them not being in season four. It was like, oh my God, my girls, I get to catch up with y'all. And I was like so interested to see the tricks who haven't really changed at all against the Winks who have changed like so much after season four. Like I was really interested in how that would look and again, they did nothing with it. It was just back to the usual. I would say overall, that's a pretty solid premiere. It wasn't great, but it also wasn't bad. And this is what I mean with season five being the last decent season. Season five, I would say is not terrible. It has a lot of really good ideas on the table. The structure is actually really interesting and makes it you know, engaging to follow the plot. The pacing isn't really all that bad. The issue with this season is how juvenile it is, um, a lot of characters don't really have engaging motivations or the motivations that they do have either don't make sense or they're just uninteresting. So it's a very tolerable watch. Like it'll entertain you well enough, but it's not of the caliber of the first four seasons. I would say the only thing that season five has up on them, well, the only thing it has up on season four is like the better structure. That's it. That's all, that's all five has. Oh, and also Snarky Musa. I missed her so much. And now we move on to the rise of Tritanus. This was one of my favorite episodes as a fucking kid. Oh my God. And we bring back the Winx Club band. Although I see we have completely forgotten about like the record deal with Jason. So goodbye that plot thread. You will perform at the Fruity Music Bar for the last time. <gasps> I think it's time you moved up in the world. You are a lying liar! And you'll also notice that no one has mentioned Love and Pet. Like at all. Like, you know, their business that they cared so much about and they didn't want to leave behind. It just, it doesn't exist. It does not exist anymore. Okay, all right, sure, whatever. I don't hate these outfits. I don't like how uniform that they are. I actually do like the fedoras. The, please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. I... I'm going to hell. <laughs> Happily. I think they're kind of cute. And I actually really like um, the hairstyles, especially Stella's. She's so cute in the pigtails. Season five outfits are usually a lot more uniform than usual, but they're not too uniform yet. For the most part, I actually really like season five outfits. I think they're very cute. They're not the same level as the first four seasons, but... I still like them. I still like them for the most part. This song is very cheesy, but you know what? I love cheese, so bring it, girl. <laughs> bring it! Also, Cassidy Ladden. Can we talk about her? 
her vocals, the intro this season is so fucking iconic. I will forever be bitter that we never got a full version of that intro with Cassidy's vocals. Oh my god, it's the poachers. You know, the losers who beat the Winx Club with Annette? <laughs> okay, but Kiko in the little leather jacket is so cute. Kiko wants to be a star and Roxy will help him get there. Go. Oh, I'm a star! Please, I'm a star! Tannis attacked Nereus at the coronation, and Uncle Neptune condemned him to the prison of Andros. <gasps> Gasp. I sense plot on the wind, or I guess in the water. See, I actually like the idea of the ocean gates. We got a vibe that they existed with season three, but I like that they're given actual form in this season. Andros is in trouble. I have to go. We're going with you. You can't, guys. I have to go through the ocean. Especially with Earth's Gate finally functioning with magic having returned, because I had that be a whole ceremony in season five's premiere. To like really drive home the fact that magic has returned to Earth, I actually really kind of like the intrigue of the oil being able to move on its own. The issue is that ultimately it doesn't mean anything. It's just a convenient way for Tritanus to be mutated, which is so stupid. It's toxic! Ah! Whereas in the rewrite, I had it be the will of, um, darker forces at work. If you know what I mean, if you know, you know. The Selkie designs are very unimpressive though. Like, as a whole, they're kind of cute. I like the veils and the fins, but they're all the same, except with very minor differences and different color palettes. And even in personality, like Pixies all had their own power source and personality. Selkies, <sighs> nothing. You get... Nothing! You lose! You really get me, I see. Thanks. I think we're a lot alike. I think we're a lot alike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't hate the Icy Tritana stuff this season. I think it would actually be really interesting to get a more vulnerable side of Icy, especially with the tricks realizing that they are just kind of running into a brick wall over and over again. But it feels so odd at first, Again, because usually Darcy is the one manipulating a guy to get what they want. So I play him like a violin and I make it look oh so easy. If there's one thing I could change with the rewrite, it probably would be to have Darcy manipulate Tritanus at first and it doesn't really work. And then Icy and Tritanus have a more organic bond that wasn't built on the manipulation. They just genuinely got each other. That I would change. And Darcy's like, all right, you can have the fish stick. I don't fucking care. Also, how convenient that Tritanus' trident is literally right there in front of him. <laughs> if I could get my hands on my trident, I could get us all out of here. Fat chance. 12 seconds later. My trident! This is why I had the oil take the form of like that, um, that new trident instead, because that makes more sense. And also it would have been crafted by, you know who. Uh, see, I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind. What's that? I don't know, but and I'm so creative like that. <laughs> We're going out to the beach to clean up. Join us. This is actually kind of cute. Is it like very cheesy and ham-fisted? Yes. But it is an overall good message for the kids. So, you know, you know, it's a good thing to care about your environment and, you know, help clean beaches or whatever. <laughs> please, please, Gen Z, save us. Please, please save us. Actually, like last time I looked at my analytics, my audience is mostly people like around my age, like in our 20s and like even into 30s. But a large chunk is also like teenagers and young adults, like Zoomers. And I'm like, um, Hi, y'all. I feel old. If the crown prince of Heracleon loses the pendant, it means he'll never be happy with the girl he loves. Why is that a thing? Also, like, what the fuck? So you're worried about your relationship that you've had for several years now falling apart because you lost a goddamn pendant? I smell insecurity. Because if your relationship can be taken down by losing a pendant, you got bigger problems. <laughs> oh my fucking god. The communication is trash, but what do we expect from these two? Mm. 
see, I actually kind of like their relationship in the first few seasons, but I think ultimately I, I don't see them as endgame. I just don't. I think this is a good like first true relationship for Bloom, but I don't see it lasting, which is part of why I had them, you know. Yeah. You're enjoying this, aren't you, you sick oh. <laughs> He's turning into a monster. Cool. Yeah, I wish I did more of that in the rewrite too, because it is kind of inconsistent with the fact that they were really into Valtor until he turned into a demon and then they just puked. <laughs> did you two see that? Ugly! Yeah, and to think I had a crush on him. Ladies, let's face it, we have really bad taste when it comes to guys. Three days later. <laughs> cool. But then again, they were also into Darkar the whole season, and he was a skeleton man in like blood clad armor. He probably smelled like pennies. Finally, they're gone. I can keep these pennies to myself now. We smell pennies! <laughs> okay, I actually really like the design of Mutant Tritanus. I like the silhouette. He feels very distinct from the other big bads. This guy could be the guy for me. I see you just met this man. Get over yourself. You can't marry a man you just met. See, I think their relationship could be very interesting, like if it was more organic and like over time instead of this love at first sight nonsense, like if they actually bonded as people. But the tricks aren't people at this point. They're plot devices, they're roadblocks. Yeah, and a lot of people have pointed this out. The whole mutating people angle feels so very Tritanus, except less interesting because the mutants all have the same design, whereas the mer monsters in season three were all unique. This is also why I involved Tritanus mutating like sea life in his army, like the Kraken, the Devourer, all those things, to like make him more unique and like give him a more foreboding army, to give him more of a kingly air, because Valtor corrupted people, yes, but it never felt like he had an army that he was personally leading. It felt like more distant minions to take care of things. Whereas Tritanus is like, no, I'm leading a military operation that I'm leading myself and I will conquer the worlds. Then I'll be able to enter the infinite ocean. From there I can reach all the worlds and conquer them with my trident. Yeah, he mentions the infinite ocean, but he doesn't explain what it is at all. I think this would have been a great chance to like explain what the infinite ocean is, why it's important. If you remember, I did a lot of world building, like expansion on the infinite ocean and all everything attached to it. What is happening to me? Oh yeah, Tritanus demutating. It's, um, I don't hate it, but it's very annoying because whole episodes have to be centered on it. I do think there could be interesting commentary on like, it is an addiction. I do think I could have handled that aspect better. Admittedly, when I was writing it, I didn't really understand a lot about the topic of addiction. I was just kind of using it as like, a, not as a plot device, but it was just kind of there and nothing was really ever done with it, I think. I don't think handling it better would have required overhauls per se, but I think more like introspection on Tritanus's part. Uh, that is something I'm trying to be mindful though of, because we will check in like occasionally with Tritanus in like the future. Not much, but like, you know, he still exists and like how he's recovering from the mutation and, you know, like trying to do better. I live though for the tricks being disgusted by Earth. Because, like, same. Well, will you look at that? Disgusting. And perfect. This feels so weird, though, that these guys just had a whole thing of, like, pollution. What the fuck? I think that's also a thing that a lot of these types of uh, shows, when they try to tackle the stuff, don't get. Like, the systemic nature of the problem. Like, um, Exxon Mobil hiding the fact that they knew that what they were doing was going to lead to irrevocable climate change um, back in, I think, like, the fucking 1950s. And they just hid the fact so they could continue making money. Like, you know, the fact that corporations are like to blame for most of these problems. Like maybe the Winks go after like the company that like made the oil rig and they're like, um, no, it was just um, an oversight. It was just a, an accident. We need a oil. And the Winks are like, fuck you. There's something in the air here. Fairy magic. How did that happen? Hey, you, do you know anything about this? The Winx, they brought magic back to Earth. The Winx! I do like this reaction, though, from the tricks. Because it's like, wow, the Winx have been busy while we were away. Because they have no idea what the Winx have been doing. And they're like, wait, they brought magic back to... Ooh. <laughs> 
guy just talk to her, you piece of shit. I feel like I've had so much more to say about season five that's just way more interesting than season six. Season six is me losing my mind. Season five is me like giving like way more in-depth commentary. And it's so much more fun. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Although I feel myself losing my voice because of how much I'll never shut up. I do find it weird that Tritanus is like, yeah, sure, let's attack the Winx because the trick said so. He doesn't really have a grudge against them. He doesn't even know who they are. And of course, Roxy doesn't transform. She just, I don't know, um, hides in the bathroom of the fruity music bar. Can't even help us fight mutants. Okay, sure, whatever. God, yeah. And also this was the season where they gave up on transformation editing. Like they would splice the transformations in really interesting ways in the first four seasons. And now it's just everyone transforms one at a time. And I also hate that they say their name and power. We know what you're the fairy of. We can see it when you transform and we've known you forever. Stella, fairy of the shining sun. Go away, you villain, or you will feel the magic of the sun and moon fairy. <laughs> it's just, it adds so much repetition and redundancy. I just, it's... I don't like it. This is really when the transformations felt like, are you, are you done yet? Which is a sin that they made us do that. Flora, fairy of nature. Three weeks later. Aisha, fairy of waves. Many months later. Techna, fairy of technology. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Musa, fairy of music. Oh my God, are they done yet? Holy shit. Ugh. <laughs> I also feel like the cinematography in the first few episodes of season five is actually really kind of competent, like actually really good, like way better than the rest of the season, especially the later seasons. And it makes me wonder, like there are rumors that Rainbow was planning the season before they made the deal with Nickelodeon and it was going to look very different. And it makes me wonder how true that is. Because maybe a lot of this was already written and like storyboarded before the deal went through. Because the first few episodes of season five just feel so good. Like they're not fantastic or anything, but they're, they are reminiscent a little bit of the first four seasons. I want to say it's a very strong start for the season, but it it is good. It's a good start. It's better than season four start. The trick. <gasps> You three were in jail again. Things change, honey. Nothing new, nothing changed. Same old shit. Same old fucking shit. My prediction is jail by. Stop that, you witches! Ugh. Okay, Winks. Let me think about that. 12 seconds later. Okay, I thought about it. No. But you did already stop and you're just waiting now. What the fuck are you doing? Like this whole rematch with the tricks doesn't feel like big deal. Like this should feel so impactful and huge. The fact that tricks are back again after such a long absence, especially with the Winx having Believix, they outclass the tricks at this point by such a wide margin. And also in terms of character, they have changed so much theoretically. And like they're adults now, they're like becoming different people, whereas the tricks are basically the same as they were back in season three. And I'm like, this feels like it could be so interesting when they clash again. And it's just back to the usual garbage. Speaking of garbage. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh oh. They tried. The generic energy beams aren't surprising though. Those were all over season four, but at least they had good spell names. I will destroy you. Aisha being the most competent fighter on the team. Like, yeah, she can't move all that fast, but she is gonna fucking kick ass. I love this. I will destroy you. Don't be Don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? What an icon. And I think also Tritanus is probably the most violent of the villains they fought so far, which I think really makes him interesting too. <sighs> yeah. Like he is a physical threat with the brute force that he uses compared to the other villains. Help! I see. How did you hear her? Okay, whatever. I knew I could count on you, Tritanus. Ugh. With our powers combined, we will rule the magic dimension. <laughs> Music to my ears, mighty Tritanus. Jail. Jail by- It is you, Tritanus. Ooh, mm, that reveal. 
I will say Kiki's voice acting, I'm not a fan of it for the most part, but there are moments where she does provide a lot of emotion for Aisha, and that's one of them. For the most part, I find her performance very melodramatic. Our magic is too weak underwater. We'll talk to Ferragonda when we get to Alfia. She'll help us make our magic stronger. Ugh. Like, I don't mind Believix not working well underwater, but this as a reason for a whole new form is so... Ugh. I see. I promise you, we will destroy those fairies. Together. <laughs> yeah, Tritanus just decides now that he's against the Winx because of Icy. That's it. There's no actual, like, proper connection. Eh. So those were the first two episodes of season five. It's already so much better than six. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, it's a decent start. A lot of the choices are interesting. The ideas are solid. It's just that execution though. It needs a lot of work. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I am gonna try and get my voice back now. Bye. <laughs>